Uh, these are lectures 22 and 23 uh, on the Black Death or the bubonic plague. Uh, we're going to break these into two parts. So we'll get a little break here in a few moments. Uh, I'm going to give you some introductory quotes here to give you a sense of the um, calamity uh, that befalls Eurasia in the 14th century. Here's a quote from 1348. And in many places in Siena, great pits were dug and piled deep of the multitude of the dead. And they died by the hundred, both day and night. And these corpses were thrown into the ditches and covered with earth. And as soon as these, di as these ditches were filled, more had to be dug. I buried my five children with my own hands. And there were also those who were so sparsely covered with earth that the dogs dragged them forth and devoured their bodies throughout the streets of the city. There was no one who wept for the dead, for we all awaited death. And so many people died that it was believed to be the end of the world." Unquote. Uh, same time period, this is a quote from, uh, from Egypt. A ship arrived in Alexandria. Aboard it were 32 merchants and a total of 300 people, among them traders and slaves. Nearly all of them had died. There was no one alive on the ship save four of the traders, one slave, and about 40 sailors. These survivors soon died in Alexandria. A report of the Black Death's arrival in England is similar. This morbid story is repeated in France, the Holy Roman Empire, the kingdoms of Spain, the Italian city-states, uh, the Golden Horde in Russia, one of the Mongol canates, uh, the Byzantine Empire, the principalities of North Africa, Persia, India, and the Mongol Empire in China. In 1344, the Golden Horde tried to capture the Crimean port of Kaffa. This is uh, from the Genoese. An Italian lawyer recorded what happened next. Quote, the whole army was affected by a disease which overran the Mongols and killed thousands upon thousands every day. He goes on to charge that the Mongol leader, quote, ordered corpses to be placed in catapults and lobbed into the city in hopes that the intolerable stench would kill everyone inside. This incident has often been cited as the first instance of um, uh, biological warfare in, his, in history. The, Mong, uh, the Muslim uh, traveler Ibn Battuta wrote in 1345, quote, the number that died daily in Damascus uh, in Syria had been 2,000, but the people were able to defeat the plague through prayer. Uh, in 1349, the holy city of Mecca was hit by the plague, likely brought uh, by infected pilgrims on the Hajj, their, their pilgrimage to Mecca. It's interesting that Batuta says they were able to defeat the, the plague through prayer. It'd be very interesting to see what evidence uh, he has for this. Uh, the Moroccan historian, Ibn, uh, Ibn Khaldun, whose parents had died of the plague, wrote, quote, civilization, both east and west, was visited by a destructive plague which devastated nations and caused populations to vanish. It swallowed up many of the good things of civilization and wiped them out. Civilization decreased with the decrease of mankind. Cities and buildings were laid waste. Roads and way signs were obliterated. Settlements and mansions became empty. Dynasties and tribes grew weak. The entire inhabited world changed. Unquote. European observers were fascinated but not too worried when the Black Death struck the western rim of Central Asia and the Middle East. One recorded that, quote, India was depopulated, Tartary, referring to the Mongols, Mesopotamia, Syria, Armenia, were covered with dead bodies. The Kurds had fled in vain to the mountains, unquote. Soon the Europeans would also become victims of the world's worst pandemic. 
What in the world is going on here? In the 14th century, the expanding human web took along with its traders and missionaries the deadly bubonic plague caused by Yersinia pestis, a small rod-shaped bacteria carried by the rat flea. Uh, the bacteria lives in the guts of the fleas and is, tr is transmitted back and forth uh, between fleas and rodents and sometimes humans. Historian Norman Cantor described the consequences of this pandemic. Quote, it threatened the stability and viability of civilization. It was as if a neutron bomb had been detonated. Neutron bombs tend to destroy people, not buildings. Nothing like this has happened before or since in the recorded history of mankind. And the men and women of the 14th century uh, would never be the same. So we're going to have to get into this topic a bit because of the dramatic impact it has on world history. Uh, we'll talk about origins here. That Central Asia was a starting point for the Black Death seems almost certain. The earliest known appearance of the Black Death was in the Christian Nestorian community just south of Lake Bakosh. Archaeologists have found a cemetery with an unusually high number of graves dating to the years 1338 and 39. Three of the gravestones actually identify plague as the cause of death. A successful disease is one which can evolve with its host, uh, tame itself or domesticate itself over generations and become friendly enough to survive along with the host, even though it might cause some mortality along the way. Uh, the common cold is probably the best example. Uh, we suffer a bit, we sniffle, we cough, we spread the germs, but we almost always get better after a short period of time. By contrast, any disease that kills most of its host population risks its own demise. It needs host in order to survive. The 14th century variety of the bubonic plague probably came from an isolated strain in Central Asia. Uh, from the Manchurian marmot, uh, a small rodent type animal. Looks like a, kind of like a prairie dog. Uh, being isolated from humans made this pathogen especially dangerous as humans had had no time to develop any immunity to it. Now that's the end of part one. In part two we're going to talk about the types of plague, uh, how it's transmitted, uh, routes and remedies. Uh, so we'll pick that up in just a moment. Thank you.